The situation in Israel continues to escalate. Uh, there's been a few days of airstrikes uh, and rocket attacks, uh, both. But now uh, Israel is mobilizing both reserves and potentially drafting um, up to 30,000 people. We have a very amusing quote, actually. This is from um, uh, one of the members of the Defense Ministry. He says that the scale of the potential mobilization uh, could lead to troops falling over each other. What's interesting in, about in that Egypt. is the falling over each other. Is the, and there's a quote there from Ehud Barak and from the guy planning the Israeli uh, uh, military leader sort of planning this and how they're looking at the World War I strategy, which mm -hmm. did have guys falling all over each other. Mm -hmm. But I mean, World War I was barbaric. Yeah, and it's a it's crazy and to talk and about. And not particularly effective in terms of military strategy. You know. It's like saying, you know what? We're looking into what Napoleon was doing at Waterloo <laughs> because I think that this thing's going to really work out. It, it it's it's weird, and and really, of course, the the reasoning behind this is that it's politics. It's not really about military effectiveness. Do they really need thirty thousand reservists on top of the army yeah. to go into a tiny little Gaza? No, it's them roaring before the elections, January of oh twenty thirteen. Okay. Among the units already garrisoned outside Gaza is. Israel's paratrooper brigade, whose commander, Colonel Amir Baram, said last month that in planning tactics he had studied World War I skirmishes in Gaza between British forces and the Ottoman Turks. Should his troops be ordered in, Defense Minister Ehud Barak told Channel 2 television, they will need to go house to house and then we will need, uh, and then we will need the lessons of the past. Yeah. So we're talking about like looking back to what happened when the Ottoman Turks fought the British in Gaza and the house to house fighting and that's yeah. that's gonna go. That's gonna be the, the key to this war: uh, cavalry and successful use of ballistas and mangonels. I think. <laughs> All right. I, I want to double down on two things before we go. Uh, one is, look, it's not an accident that this flare-up happened right after yeah. the U.S. elections and right before the Israeli elections. If you think that that was just a wild coincidence, you don't know a thing about politics. Okay. I, I'm very strong on that. I, I'm not. There's no bending on that. I mean, it's. The first kid that gets shot by the Israelis accidentally, whether you believe him or not, happens on November 8th. The next two kids accidentally get shot on November 10th. Our elections were on November 6th. What did Israel get? They got the Iron Dome. Ehud Barak, after they got Iron Dome, which protects them from the missiles, it's good that they have it, there's nothing yeah, wrong right. with that, uh, said Obama is one of the greatest presidents we've ever worked with, American presidents, he's the greatest friend to Israel. All right, we're not messing with your elections. But after your elections are over and before ours, we're the right wing party. We win if there's a war. Yeah. And, and so let me double down on that second aspect of it. Look, if there's peace in the Middle East, Israel and Palestine are two different states, what's the point of the right wing party in Israel? What's the point of Likud in that world? Exactly. They, they, they're on the outside looking in. What, they're going to be like, go, let's go back to war? No, nobody's going to vote for that, right? So they have a perpetual motive to instigate conflict and war, the Likud party, the right wing party in Israel. At some point, Israelis got to get wise to that. But let me, let, let, let me, so yours, that's a conspiracy theory. It's not a bad one. It's an incredibly reasoned one. Um, and obviously, any sort of mobilization for war is some sort of conspiracy. One person doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. But the, what's Hamas's role in this? Because, you know, the. They're so easy to instigate. They're so, I mean, if, if literally, like, what kind of irresponsible leadership, and you know I agree with you on, on, on Israel's role, but what kind of irresponsible leadership lobs frickin' rockets into Israel that you literally know are never effective? Yeah. Maybe you get totally lucky and the rocket literally hits someone because that's the only way it ever kills anybody. No, and, and when you know what hap what's gonna happen is, let me just see it through really quickly, yeah. is that Israel's gonna respond and kill accidentally, whatever, some of your kids. Yeah. So you're, and you're, you're playing a role in this. You know what their response is gonna be. You know there's an election coming. No, no, they, they're more than anything else. And look, we've talked about the immorality of firing into civilians a million times. So that's a given, right? Now, but it's so stupid because you're giving them exactly what they want. If, if I told, my guess is that if I went into Gaza Strip and I said there's, before the Israeli election, so Likud is doing this, etc., that 99 out of 100 people would agree with me, right? They say, oh yeah, you're right, they started this thing because of the elections. Then I would say, okay, so why are you helping them by then lobbing the rockets, which then says, Ehud Barak and, and then Yahoo get to say, I get to unleash hell on these guys. They launch rockets near Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. So why are you helping them? And then I think the answer would be, oh shit, 
<laughs> You're right, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's or, stupid, it's dumb, it's dumb, it's dumb. But you know what? I don't know, I think there's something at play. There's something more complicated than that. No, there. no, it's, I think that I turn into Ben Manquist and I say, there's a really simple explanation. They just got hit, you know, they lost their military leader, they lost the kids, the civilians, etc. They're angry, they're like, whatever we have, launch! Yeah, I think that they feel, they feel powerless. Their, their best weapon right now, as you pointed out, is incredibly ineffective. So ineffective, that when we talk about them launching these rockets, we say how many they sent. Not how many people they killed or how many buildings they destroyed, but how many weapons they fired. We don't do that. For, it's to make people think that they're firing like cruise missiles or something like that. No, they're incredibly ineffective rockets. And now with, with Iron Dome going up, uh, from what I've read, four of the physical elements of Iron Dome are already deployed. By this weekend, they're expecting a fifth. Soon, even their most effective, terribly weak weapon will be useless as well, or even more useless than it is. By the way, Iron Dome 5, the best sequel. <laughs> okay, one, one last last thing on this. Look, Mahatma Gandhi had an unbelievable quote, which I only discovered about a year ago. Uh, you know, you, I have given, and the whole world gives Mahatma Gandhi tremendous credit for nonviolence, peaceful, da da da. At one point, he said, We don't use guns because we don't have guns. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he used the most effective strategy to get independence, which was not violence. They would have gotten crushed if they had done violence. He did nonviolence, it was smart. So it was deeply moral, but it also had the advantage of being incredibly smart. Just in your yeah. theory, the only thing that is your theory is that it suggests that the manipulation is entirely one way. Mm -hmm. That there's no manipulation on the other side. That this is not the circumstance that, oh, in some yeah, way, that Hamas yeah. is looking for. Also, no, no. Of course, Hamas also wins from conflict. So that's right. a great point. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. dismiss that. It's just in this particular case, since there's an election coming up, it was Israel that instigated it, and Hamas thinks, okay, maybe that's a win for us too, right? Because they they breed off of conflict as well. Uh, I don't, not all Palestinians, Hamas, not yeah. all Israelis, Likud party. Okay, that's the guys who win from war. And so my final thing is. Learn, learn from history. Don't go, Israelis. Don't go back to World War One, right? <laughs> yeah, not that history, right? And, pa <laughs> and Palestinians learn from what Gandhi did, what Martin Luther King did. Not because they were moral, which was great, but because they were smart and they were effective. If I was the leadership of the Palestinians, I would say never a single bullet or a single stone again. What we do is we march. We march to the border, and I'll stand in front if they had brave leadership. And we're going to get mowed down, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to go to the border, and they're going to shoot us. But we're going to keep going back to the border every single day until the world says, no mas. you got to let them go.